Happy New Year and welcome to the Night Sky, a monthly series that follows the best and most exciting events in amateur astronomy from month to month throughout the year. I'm Michael Martin, and in today's video, we're going to be taking you on a tour of the nighttime sky, looking at the best views for you to see with the naked eye, a pair of binoculars, or maybe a brand new telescope that you just got for the holiday season. If you enjoy this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. But most importantly, let me know what you're able to get out to observe or image in the comments section below. Let's start off the new year by taking a look at one of the best ways that you can get into astronomy by going outside with no equipment whatsoever and enjoying the best meteor showers for the month of January. At the very start of the month, the quadranted streak across the night sky, putting on a great show to ring in the new year. To see this meteor shower, go outside on the evening of January 2nd into the early morning of January 3rd and face towards the northeast. From there, the quadrantids will appear to emanate between the constellation Draco and Butes. With the moon completely out of the way, we'll get the full effect of this shower. Although some years can produce rates of up to 120 meteors per hour under perfect conditions, realistic expectations for most of us on an average year will be more in the range of 20 to 40 meteors per hour. Remember that the darker the skies and the longer you wait into the morning of January 3rd, the better this show is likely to be for you. If you're able to get out and see any streaks of light in the nighttime sky from this meteor shower, please be sure to let me know how many you were able to see and what your experience was like in the comments section below. For those of you that got some new equipment for the holiday season, maybe even your first pair of binoculars or a telescope for Christmas, there's no greater place to start in the nighttime sky to test out that equipment and your experience level by going out to observe the surface of our closest neighbor, the moon. Let's begin this January by talking about the phases of the moon, and then we'll cover some specific features on its surface. The new moon is going to be on January 2nd. It's during this time that the moon rises and sets with the sun, meaning that you cannot see any part of its surface. We then move on to its first quarter phase on January 9th. This is my favorite time to observe the moon with a pair of binoculars or a telescope, with the angle of the sunlight revealing a great wealth of detail on its surface. On the night of January 17th, the full moon will rise just as the sun sets, and the last quarter moon follows on January 25th. Let's take some time this month to talk about some lunar features that are fun for you to go out and observe and study beginning with ones that you don't need any equipment for whatsoever. Go out near the first quarter phase of the moon and study the mare features of the lunar surface with the naked eye. Attempt to find its craters with binoculars and a telescope, such as Hercules and Atlas. As the full moon approaches, you can make an attempt at the impressive Copernicus crater which spans 93 kilometers. Take your time studying the surface of the moon. Write down details of what you see, sketch it by hand, and even try to hook up your cell phone or imaging equipment to a telescope to take some pictures of it. If you tag me on social media, I may use your picture in next month's installment of The Night Sky to show off your work that you're doing in amateur astronomy. That's exactly what John did when he took this incredible picture showing the beauty of the tree line of Earth with the moon above in this incredible image. John, thank you so much for sharing this image with us and keep up the excellent work that you're doing in astrophotography. As we move on from the moon, let's take a look at the planets of our solar system. We're going to begin this month as we always do with the closest planet to the sun, Mercury. That close, fast orbit makes it a difficult target to see, 
especially if you're hoping to view it in the evening sky right after sunset. Thankfully, this January has some great opportunities in the early part of the month to do just that. Go outside and look to the southwest right after sunset, with it reaching its highest point in the sky around January 11th. On that evening, it will be paired quite nicely with Saturn as well. But as Mercury always does, it slingshots back around the sun, dropping below the horizon and becoming an early morning target by the end of the month. After months of enjoying views of Venus, it finally leaves the evening sky this month, being quite low to the horizon at the start of January and transitioning to an early morning target by the end of the month. Our friendly red neighbor Mars rises out of the southeast in the early morning sky, but just isn't a good target yet to go out to observe or image. Those disappointing views of Mars right now will improve as the year goes on, with our two planets approaching their closest point to each other late in 2022, which will bring about some incredible opportunities to observe and image our friendly red neighbor later on this year. January will still hold some nice views of Jupiter in the southwest right after sunset, but be sure to catch it before it sets behind the horizon early in the night. In the early parts of the month, the beautiful ringed planet Saturn shines bright in the southwest between Jupiter, Mercury, and Venus. But again, the earlier the better for trying to view it as it becomes a much more difficult target as it approaches the horizon by the end of the month. For those of you with a telescope that can handle high magnifications, be sure to check out Uranus traveling through the Aries constellation and Neptune just behind Jupiter in the southwest once the sky gets dark. As we leave our solar system behind, let's take a look at the best deep sky objects for the month of January. Finding these objects will be more difficult and will require darker skies, the moon to be out of the way, and a telescope in most cases to get the best views of some of the faint details that you're gonna be looking for. Let's start off by facing towards the southeast. Look up until you find the constellation Orion. After finding the three stars that make up its belt, move down until you come across the gorgeous Orion Nebula and its stellar nursery of stars being born. Move back up to Orion's belt, and slightly above that area, you'll find a bright reflection nebula, M78. Test out medium and high magnifications on this target to see what the best views are for your equipment. Move up from the constellation Orion until you come across the constellation Taurus. Here you will find the open star cluster Hyades. Spend your time studying this region of space with the naked eye, a pair of binoculars, and then the lowest powered eyepiece that you have for your telescope. Just above Hyades, you'll find the Pleiades. The Seven Sisters are another great naked eye and binocular target that will reveal more and more stars as you move your way up to higher magnification views through a telescope. In long exposure photography, the blue nebula in between us and these stars appears with the Seven Sisters. I'll be sure to leave a list of some more objects that I think are worth your time in the winter sky over on latenightastronomy.com. Be sure to check out the description of this video below for a link to that article. Those are just some of the best things to get out and see under the nighttime sky as we kick off 2022. Please be sure to let me know of anything that you're able to get out to observe or image in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.